and then I'm the last person to speak. But you know, it's really um, difficult to to speak after a very enthusiastic Therese. Uh, we were in one workshop this morning, uh, this afternoon. So, oh, I feel like I'm in the studio. <laughs> um, well, I think this discussion is more of how a high, higher education institution can strategize their education technology uh, plans. It's more of um, the management uh, management perspective rather than the teacher's perspective or the lecturer's perspective. So let me first greet you with the uh, I'd like to credit my friend for giving you that. Okay, well, I'd like to start by saying educational technology is one of the necessities in the 21st century. We all know that. Educational institutions, whether higher or basic, needs a, 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 an ed tech strategic uh, plan. An ed tech strategic plan helps higher education institution leaders to focus on its energy and resources and adjust the university's direction to a changing and teaching and learning environment. Though, you know, education technology is an uh, acceptable um, pedagogy, there are challenges that face schools or universities, university leaders in particular, both technical and pedagogical. I'd like you to focus on this person and uh, the one that he's holding. This was in 2008, um, the Prime Minister of Australia. And uh, I'll go back to this uh, picture in a while. But looking at this picture, seeing it as the old ways of delivering classes, of course you don't want to go back to this kind of teaching. Do you? Of course not. Like open your book on page 5, answer, page 1 to page 98, you know, things like that. And, and, and it doesn't really give us a good perspective of what teaching and learning is. Because today, we know, as the, the keynote speaker this morning said, that the 21st century kid is all, already a global citizen, inspired, optimistic, and, and a lot of, they're flexible, they want to be connected. And this work, uh, a while ago, this, the workshop about be, bring your own device, we're saying that in the staff room, I always notice the, sta the, the faculty in the staff room, if they say, uh, students change already from the time that I was a student maybe 20, 25 years ago. If you said that for the time being, of you, time being for, the, like, for example, three years from now, maybe you should change the way you teach. So basically, if you keep on ranting that students of today are changing, maybe the, the ways you teach should also be changed. And can we go back to this picture? Okay. What do you think is the, the computer at that time? In, this was in 2008. Okay. This is a Lenovo ThinkPad T61, one of the most popular, if not the most popular laptop in 2007. What were they thinking when this Prime Minister of Australia was holding it? This was only in 2007. Seven years, from, seven years ago, he was holding a, a Lenovo ThinkPad T61. Before, they thought this was the best uh, gadget until everything came into a mobile devices, uh, iPad, uh, Android, and Windows Phone. Because today, the 21st century teaching and learning promotes integration of different technologies to the educative process to the top stake stakeholders of any visionary schools. I think what I'm trying to say is that we, from the old teaching, let's traverse to the technologically advanced experience. I mean to say that gone are the days that we just sit inside the class, listen to the teacher, and just look at them and wait for the bell to ring. You know, and the teachers are already gone are the days that the teachers stand and tell them that I'm giving you this information, I'm pouring you this knowledge. You remember this, this vision about education 10 years ago, that a student has an open skull and the teacher is pouring knowledge. Have you seen that kind of picture? So th those, those pictures are no longer uh, today, but everything is more of on collaboration. I'd like to, to focus on the three parts of this. I'm disturbed by my face. Three parts of this presentation. The first, this is more of the strategic plan. When you invest your IT in your university, does it have an effect on your teaching and learning process? Of course, there's a lot of suppliers, a lot of like learning management system. I won't say brands because they're all here. Friends from uh, familiar faces from uh, D2L uh, and Blackbirds are here. So, but when you invest on, um, on, the in, on your IT, does it, have a, does it commensurate with the teaching and learning process? Of course, the other parts of this presentation is that have you tried auditing 
your IT investments? Have you tried auditing your ICT environment? You have you tried assessing? Are you at par of a, an international standards? And the third one is the competencies, pedagogical-based competencies of your academic staff using technology and teaching. But I wouldn't go into de details, especially on the last part. Now that ASEAN in 2015 is already integrating ASEAN nations, how can we prepare in terms of educational technology? Let me introduce to you where I came from. This is just one slide. I came from Far Eastern University. It started in 1928. There are seven uh, colleges, business and finance, nursing, art, science, etc., etc. So I'm, I'm, I'm introducing myself and also my, my institution. Right, never mind about it. Okay, going to a more serious talk. How do we achieve 21st century schooling? It has to consider the, the following. Learning and teaching, teaching, uh, learning and teaching and research, ICT professional learning, learning spaces, and the ICT infrastructure. I will focus on the ICT infrastructure. I am an education person. My degree is in math. My degree is in physics. Uh, I, I do education, and at the same time, education technology. My, well, nemesis, so to speak, are the IT managers. Are there anyone IT managers here? Why? Because IT managers would like to tell the people from, from uh, the board of the school, buy this, this is good, buy this, this is good. Me, I always say, wait, before you buy, are we really need to buy this? Do we really need to use this? Does it commensurate learning? So I'd like to focus on this. The question that I want to bring to you is that does your investments create massive effects in teaching and learning process of your institution? I'd like to show to you this, um, this uh, grid. First, the first grid is on, on, on this side is uh, quadrant C, quadrant D, quadrant A, and quadrant B. From, from uh, the x-axis, low passive learning to high passive learning, that's the technology performance, and the learning effectiveness from uh, the, the, sorry, it, the x-axis learning effectiveness and the y-axis is the technology performance. I'd like to show to you, do you want your, your um, IT investments to be going from quadrant D to quadrant B? What does it mean? Meaning to say that, can you read it? Not really? Okay, even me, I cannot read it. <laughs> okay. It's more of passive learning to low technology performance, to engage learning to low perform low technology performance. Mean to say that we don't like this kind of, of structure. Okay? We have a passive learning. Your students are not learning to have to a low technology performance to engage learning to low technology performance. Of course, we want a good technology performance as well. Or do you want your perspective to be like this in, in your, in your uh, IT investments from quadrant B to quadrant A? It's more of engage learning, low technology performance, to engage learning high technology performance. That's, that's okay. But of course, for some universities that doesn't have that much budget with high technology performances or advanced technology, that this might not be a good paradigm. Also, would, I like, would you like to be like this? Quadrant C to quadrant A. Passive learning, high technology performance to engage learning, high technology performance. But what is really important is this. Quadrant D to Quadrant A. Passive learning, low technology performance to engage learning, high technology performance. This is what we want. But what is it that we don't want? This one. Why is it that, why is it that we don't want this kind of paradigm? Because moving from D, passive learning, to low technology performance, to C, passive learning, high technology performance, is obviously counterproductive. If technology is not used to enhance engaged learning, there is no reason to pay the higher cost of greater functionality. So this is what I always tell to, to, to my IT manager. That, you know, if this is the trend now, you want to invest. Yes, we have money. Money is just, you can get it. But the thing is that we are in the academic, we are in the academe. Are we using that money to enhance the learning? So. I've also done a lot of uh, audit and assessment. That's why my IT manager is my nemesis, that I'm auditing him. Like this, I can share it with you. You, you cannot see it from there. I can share it with you. Um, I wanted to know, are IT investments are at par with the international standards? For example, I'll give you three examples. Number of existing desktop computers used by the students. 
previously we have about uh, this was in 2012 2013 we have about a computer ratio across all the departments about 23 is to 1 approximately okay of course we want to move to a standard 1 is to 1 and, and that's that's the ideal thing and we have a lot of it's important that you audit your your IT it's where you know your perspective is going on where your your ideas are going no so that's one the the IT I want to I want to be fast the, tec the, the the technical part is very important you pay you make sure that and the, the learning is enhanced second are your teachers prepared are your teachers enough to 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 use that technology so let me give you a snapshot of our I know this is this might be confidential but I'm sharing it with you these are the percentage of our faculty using technology about 80% of them own either a laptop or a netbook that's good to know okay about 62% own an Apple brand Philippines is an Apple country unlike probably Indonesia it's like Blackberry country I don't know Malaysia um, there are about 33% owned by uh, own a smartphone and 8% own complex consoles and there are about 2% do not own any gadgets at all not even a basic phone I wonder how do they like communicate with their with the loved ones not even a basic phone 55% of them use uh, their gadgets five hours but more than one hour a day why is it it's important to know how many times they use it because you want to know whether you want your technology to be productive to them okay about 13% of them use gadgets more than 10 hours but less than 24 hours and about 8% use gadgets in less than an hour a day me before I open my eyes I'm holding my phone on the side of my bed the, mo the first thing that I, I, I check is my phone when I open my eyes 83% of them use laptops or netbooks in their daily instructional activities this is a good note 75% of them use LCD projectors 20% the bottom line here ladies and gentlemen is that I want to, to tell you that it's important that you know what kind of academic staff you have in terms of the use of technology okay top top brands I said uh, Philippines is a, an Apple brand 9% Samsung Acer etc but the question would be are the new skills and the competencies of future are being neglected why is there high resistance percentage in the use of technology in the classroom we need answers so let me read this to you educational technology strategic plan is necessary in any educational institutions an edtech strategic plan can be developed to assist academic leaders to plan and therefore control the use of and investment in information management system or the learning management systems information technology and communication technology and infrastructure it should also highlight suggested mechanisms for addressing wider government policy priorities and ICT directions as well as actions to ensure that each university's missions and visions are supported by ICT strategies that are measurable within the specific outcomes of deliverables why did I read that to you I wanted to make an, a, 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 a statement that IT and educational technology should not be an afterthought it's supposed to be a plan if you plan for your curriculum if you plan for your pedagogy if you plan for, for your for, for your mission and vision your IT and educational technology should be parallel to it it's not an afterthought like you, you you thought of it oh this is a nice learning management system let's get this this is the new trend let's get this it's part of your part and parcel of what the, the university is all about of course we know what UNESCO said in 2008 to live learn and work successfully in an increasingly complex information rich and knowledge-based society students and teachers must utilize uh, technology effectively that's why in my university we come up with uh, the document that a three-year strategic plan of the Office of Education Technology I don't know if other universities has education technology office it has a vision statement for ICT and educational technology an audit assessment uh, current capacity of your university what is your proposed implementation the rationale behind it overview of proposals and implementation strategy also this is uh, what I wanted to to give to you uh, Therese this is the ICT competency based standards where you level your faculty you need to know the competencies of your faculty in the use of technology as well are there level one level two level three level and the other one it was a debate it wasn't that really a debate a while ago it was a consensus that it's biased to say that the teachers are the only teachers are not ready to use technology 
Sometimes students are not also ready to use technology. Maybe they are digitally literate, but are they, can they use that technology for learning? Not for gaming, not for anything else, not for social networking, but using those technology for learning. That's, I think there's no research, as far as I know, there's no literature that, that, that says that students of today are ready. We just assume. Everyone assumes that oh, students of today are, are, are technology persons. We just assume that. But we, it, there was never a research. If you want to make that research, let's collaborate. Let me know. Okay? And things like this. I'd like to focus on, since I don't have time, I'd like to focus on the standards of the levels. If you're a level one teacher, what are you? Okay? Demonstrate knowledge and skills in basic computer operations and other information devices, including basic troubleshooting and maintenance. Teachers should be able to use appropriate office and teaching productivity tools. Meaning for you to be able to move to the next level, you have to satisfy this standard. Okay? You have to, to have trainings and move to the next level. For level two, it's quite long. You need to, to, to know how to plan, implement, and you know how to assess. And of course, if this is long, level three is much longer. You create, level standards of level three is that you create a new learning environment for your students. So how do we really achieve that? First, the instrument. This is very open. Uh, this is my research in 2012, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, I made a, an instrument to level the capacity of the teachers in tertiary level in their technology capability, whether you're level one, level two, level three. If you're level one, what do you do? There are X number of hours for you to be trained, for you to be able to move to the next level, okay? and, and things like that. So what are the things that we need to consider? Um, first, uh, policy, policy of your university, policy of the government, well, Lucky for us, we don't have much of that policy in the Philippines. So <laughs> it's, it's, we're, we're trying to create a new policy. So academic ranking, I know that university teachers, this is the tertiary level, that to be promoted, you have to be like writing researches. But I suggest that levels of ICT competency-based standards must be included in the promotion. Like for example, you cannot be an assistant professor if you're not level one. You cannot be associate professor if you're not level to IT-based competency teachers. Support from administration is very important. Um, our friend from New Zealand is from the finance here. It was really a good, good discussion a while ago that you support the, the infrastructure, etc. Creating culture and personal motivation. Policy, this may not sound good, but this is a military rule. I just made the parallelism on the military. In the military, you cannot move to the next rank until you finish levels and series of trainings in the field. Okay? That's a military rule. But most importantly, it's your personal motivation. Technology is that you cannot just push. Uh, we tried that seven years ago. Like our, our education technology specialist pushed everyone. Put your syllabus on the learning management system. Push, put your, everyone's being pushed. So it failed. It died in a natural death. So now, it has to come from the personal personality of an individual. Do not push it. Some senior faculty doesn't want to learn anymore because they're ju just already counting their days to retirement. Thus, resistance is high. And um, to answer my ASEAN call, there are no standards in ASEAN in terms of educational technology. I am calling this to my colleagues now to write a research about the standards of educational technology in ASEAN nations. There is none research that says uh, about um, ASEAN integration in terms of educational technology. The questions are, should be, are we prepared for the ASEAN integration in terms of educational technology? For example, I want to be, uh, I studied in Malaysia for my first year in university. If I move second year in the Philippines, does it have an equal standards in curriculum, in assessment, in educational technology, in credits, for example, MOOCs, iMOOCs, etc.? Are the standards the same for all the members of the country? Are all amenable to the waste done by the U.S. or U.K. counterparts? I'm sorry for my friends from UA, U.S. and U.K. Um, U.S. and U.K. are, are you know, vibrant. But that doesn't mean that we follow what they're doing. Now, I'm just I'm playing devil's advocate here. Um, it doesn't mean that it, it's okay to them, approved to them. It works well with them. It will, will, it will, it will work with us. We have a culture. ASEAN, that's why we call it one ASEAN, to collaborate with each other. 
does it need proper accreditation? I'd like to end with the, my few slides about this uh, article about the avalanche is coming. An avalanche is coming to higher education. An, av an avalanche is a, um, an ice going down to the hill. Right now, the snow-covered, and I quote, the snow-covered mountainside looks solid, but underneath, changes are taking place. If we are not changing ourselves, we can be like left behind, okay? Rising costs have students, parents, employees asking, is the university education a good value, okay? In the path, in the path of the avalanche, the one thing you cannot do is to stand still. You'll be like dead. Okay. Here are my final words. Higher education institutions should include EdTech strategic plan in their grand plans. This should not be an afterthought. I will always say that it will not, should not be an afterthought. Everything is in the plan should commensurate to the learning of the students because at the end of the day, this is not how, how efficient your learning management is. It's not efficient your, your technologies are. But are your students uh, efficiently utilizing it to achieve the learning, learnings that they need to achieve? ASEAN countries should meet and create acceptable standards in educational technology. Again, I'm calling my colleagues in ASEAN nations to come up to meet to make standards in educational technology that affects gravely the teaching and learning culture of an, an higher, uh, higher education institution or one ASEAN. Faculty development must be a priority. Standardization of educational technology practices is a must, especially, which I already mentioned, for the ASEAN Integration 2015. Also, the last part, I included it because a lot of universities are thinking about rankings. Time, uh, Times, uh, Shanghai, what else? Um, other, other university rankings. But there is what we call webometrics rankings of world universities. That you're being ranked according to um, the knowledge that you put on your website. Okay? You're being ranked on how many researches you publish on your website. Aside from you being good in, in literature or let's say math, um, webometrics ranking is that your faculty should publish and be placed in your website, and that's going to be ranked also. Webometrics ranking of the world. So that's for me. This is me. You can um, email me, please. Again, I'm pleading my colleagues from, from ASEAN. Let's meet and let's make that standards. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the day. Thank you very much for no questions. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Professor Harrod. Okay.